As stated, the first dressing change of the incision site of the amputation occurs two days following surgery, but can differ based on the physician or special cases as each amputation and patient is different. Following the initial dressing change, these occur most often every two days from then on until cleared by the surgical team. For the transtibial incision, the most common materials used for the dressing change include zero form directly on the incision to sterilize and prevent infection, and a curlex roll applied to the residual limb in a figure eight pattern. This can be secured with surgical tape once leg is covered just distal to the patella. Once this is complete, the process of applying the shrinker, prosthetic sock, and rigid removable dressing begin. There are a series of steps to be completed following the dressing change. The first step begins with a shrinker. This is used to reduce the amount of fluid buildup in the limb and begin to shape the limb for prosthetic use. These are sized based on the circumference of the patient's limb, which is determined by the prosthetist. Once the correct size is chosen, the shrinker may be applied in two methods. The first method includes the use of a donning tube. This is a plastic tube that is provided by the hanger team, which makes the process of shrinker application possible with one person and is more pleasant for the patient. To use, take the shrinker right side out or silicone beads in and reflect it over the top of the tube until the top of the shrinker is taut and flat to the top, resembling a drum. From there, Position the top of the flat shrinker at the distal part of the patient's leg and gently roll it on until the silicone beads make contact with the patient's upper limb. Ensure that there are no wrinkles in the shrinker or folds, as well as ensuring the bottom of the shrinker is snug to the patient's distal residual limb. If a donning tube is not being used, the forehand method should be used. This requires two people, either two medical professionals or one medical professional with help from the patient. In this method, one person will pull the top of the shrinker horizontally while the other person or patient will pull vertically to get the shrinker opened as wide as possible. From there, gently slide the shrinker onto the patient's limb, checking again for wrinkles and excess shrinker material at the distal residual limb. The silicone beads at the top will assist in preventing distal slipping or migration of the shrinker while the patient is wearing it. Please note that this is a painful process for the patient more often than not due to the limb being very sensitive following surgery. If medication is due for the patient, it is wise to distribute them prior to shrinker application. Once shrinker is in place, the prosthetic sock can be applied with or without the donning tube in the same manner. Prosthetic socks come in three different thicknesses for the purpose of filling up space within the rigid removable dressing once a patient's residual limb begins to shrink and the amount of fluid reduces. These ply thicknesses include one ply or yellow stitching. This is the thinnest ply and normally what will be applied initially as patient is usually the largest in the limb right after surgery. Three ply or green stitching and five ply or blue stitching. The higher ply amounts can be used later to fill up space between the shrinker and the rigid removable dressing as the patient shrinks. This also gets the patient used to differing sock ply management as this is needed for prosthetic wear. The socks can be layered over each other. Just ensure that there are no large wrinkles and that they are applied one at a time. Once the dressing has been changed, the shrinker is in place as well as the sock, the application of the rigid removable dressing is ready to be performed. To don, the patient may need to assist in lifting the leg or help may be necessary from a medical staff member. Once lifted, slide the kiwi under the patient's leg until the foam curved portion is sitting just distal to the patella. This resembles a smile under the patella. Peel back the distal anterior foam and ensure the limb is sitting just superior to the memory foam and not making heavy contact with it. From there, tuck the foam into itself comfortably snug against the limb and overlap the black piece of material 
to secure with Velcro. At the proximal portion of the rigid removable dressing, the black straps will cross in an X pattern to secure the device to the patient's leg, as well as assist with suspension when patient is standing. Once the straps are secured, the top of the prosthetic sock may be folded over the straps for a more comfortable fit for the patient's upper leg. When patient is up with therapy or moving about the room for transfers or to use the bathroom, additional suspension of the device most likely will be necessary. A waist belt will be provided to the patient for this reason. To apply, the waist belt bottom strap is threaded through the top X pattern straps and Velcroed to itself. From there, the waist belt will Velcro around the patient's waist to better secure the device to the patient's limb. The excess straps may be trimmed for proper fit as well as adjusting the Velcro to where they are needed based on the patient's size and length of residual limb. An issue you may experience is in the transtibial rigid removable dressing is migration off of the patient's leg when they are transferring or up and moving with therapy. This can be a safety hazard for the patient as the device is more likely to fall off of the patient's limb and injury could occur. To mitigate this issue, ensure that the waist belt is being used and that it is secure and threaded through the proximal straps on the device. Another fix may be to add a thicker sock if the device is loose and sloppy. A three ply or five ply can substitute the one ply or a combination of these to fill the space once again between the shrinker and the rigid removable dressing. In this section, we will discuss some issues that you may come across with the Kiwi device and how to troubleshoot them. If you notice a screw has come loose or come out of the posterior portion of the rigid removable dressing, this can be fixed with a Phillips head screwdriver to re-secure it into place. If the proximal portion of the device has slid up or down, it will need to be secured at a length that allows clearance in the patient's gluteal area. When in doubt, please contact your prosthetic team.